This is the most versatile tripod I have ever owned and used, and it cost under $100. A few months ago, Small Rig reached out to me and wanted to send out their budget-friendly travel folding tripod to see if it's something that I could recommend to my Canon M50 users out there. As I do with a lot of products that are sent out to me, I actually take the normal product or the normal tripod I was using and I swapped it out for this one. Figure live with it for a few weeks and see if it's something that I could actually recommend. And a few months later, I have not swapped back to my tripod that cost about three times the price, a Manfrotto travel tripod. And that's because this one basically offers a lot more versatility and I find that it is built just as well and it's just as high quality product as my old tripod. And I think when you think about tripods and the fact that you can buy a tripod and unlike a camera body, you can be using that tripod 30 or 40 years from now if that is a well-built tripod. It means means that the ownership cost of a tripod over the life of the tripod is extremely low. And just to give you an idea, I have a old Manfrotto tripod that is something like 30 or 40 years old, and I am still using that as my backup or second tripod. And here it is, as you can see, it is a very old school looking tripod. It isn't quite as switch and doesn't have all the functionalities of the modern tripods. It's not a quick setup and tear down and it is quite heavy, but it still works and it does all the functions that you would expect of a tripod. So when you consider how long you're going to be able to keep and use your tripod, the cost of ownership becomes very, very low. And I think it is worth taking the time to find the right tripod and investing whatever amount of money it takes to buy a good quality tripod. And in this case, you can get a good quality tripod for under $100. And honestly, this thing is absolutely built like a tank. It is like mostly metal. It is heavy duty metal. And the plastic parts are sort of a heavy duty composite component parts. And the the tripod that I used to use, the Manfrotto tripod, also had plastic parts on it, but the, the plastic parts on that actually didn't feel as solid, and the metal didn't feel as solid as well. The other thing about this tripod is it is light enough to carry around. It's not something I would go on a long-distance hiking sort of track with. It's not that sort of super lightweight sort of composite or carbon fiber type tripod, but it's light enough to carry around for daily use but it's heavy enough that you don't feel like it's gonna blow over or fall over. And my old man Frodo tripod, I felt like it was just that little bit too light. The other thing that's really cool about this is the quick fold down and set up. It really has a unique way that it folds down and sets up. And each leg just folds out from the main post of the tripod. And so in its simplest form, when you first fold the tripod down, you essentially immediately get a short sort of height tripod without actually requiring to extend any of the legs. And the extending the legs is sort of the slower part of the whole process. So if you just needed a sort of short tripod to get a quick shot, all you've got to do is fold down and fold back up these legs. So that is a super, super quick way to get yourself, at least in the beginning, a very short tripod. Now, when fully extended as a tripod with the three legs, you are going to get to around 198 centimeters. So that's gonna get you over your head. This is good if you're shooting things up high, like maybe birding or wildlife or something in a tree. You're gonna be able to get the camera up over your head so you can be able to look through the viewfinder and you're going to be able to not have to be crouching down and hurting your back or hurting your neck. Now, you're also going to be able to get this in its shortest form. I I think it's around 48 centimeters. So yeah, 48 centimeters, very short. Just to give an idea, 200 centimeters is probably around seven foot or something like that. And 48 centimeters is probably about a uh, foot and a half, two feet, something like that. So you've got a broad range of height. So you're never gonna feel like you really needed a shorter tripod or a taller tripod. You really have all those bases covered. Now, in addition to that, this can actually turn into a monopod and I use a monopod quite a bit for sort of sports and wildlife. And it's nice with this tripod because I no longer have to carry a monopod around. So now I've been able to dump my monopod I just carry this tripod and I can change it over to monopod format whenever I want. And it is a reasonably straightforward and quick process. 
I've just taken the neck of the tripod off. Here's one of the tripod feet. I screw these together. And now we have our monopod. Now in monopod format, it goes from 84 centimeters up to two meters. That's about two and a half feet to around seven feet or so. And really when you want to use it as a monopod is mainly when you're doing sort of sports or wildlife or any situation where you're moving around and you need to be able to get a shot quickly and keep moving. So the monopod, when it's fully extended, it isn't actually that hard to sort of move around and hold around because you've just got the single post. If you do want to fold it up and fold it down, now you're only dealing with sort of one leg that you're changing the height on rather than three legs. So whether it be kid sports or professional sports or wildlife, this is going to make you a lot more flexible and your ability to move from spot to spot is going to be very easy and you're not going to have to be worrying about carrying around the sort of the full tripod. Now for extra stability when you have got this thing in sort of windy conditions you actually have a little hook on the bottom so you can take your camera bag you just hang it off this hook and that just adds a little bit of extra weight. We'll tighten up that shaft. Add a, it adds a little bit of extra weight, just gives you extra weight on the tripod. Now, if you're keeping it in sort of a low position like this, you also have the ability, you've got three different height settings with these legs. And that is the lowest setting. And then this is the next setting. And then you've obviously got the third, the normal sort of setting. But in addition to that, if you're kind of on uneven, on uneven ground, you can actually have one leg like this. You can extend this leg like that. And now we've sort of got a totally different tripod setup. But obviously still got the height adjustment of the neck here. So you've got a lot of versatility and ability to sort of stabilize this on uneven ground. And you even have the little feet at the end. They are just adjustable. So if you just need a minor adjustment, you can just sort of tweak those in and out. That's also good if you're on sort of like a, a flat floor or a floor that's supposed to be flat but isn't quite flat. You can just tweak those and that just stabilizes the tripod. And the other thing I love about this tripod is it has an Arca Swiss head on the top of the ball head. Now, that means that it comes with an Arca Swiss plate that you can screw on the bottom of your Canon M50 and just use it like a normal tripod plate. But if you have the small rig cage or the small rig L bracket or any cage or L bracket that has an Arca Swiss plate built into the bottom, you are not going to need to carry around the, the plate from the tripod. You're gonna be able to just put the camera straight on top of the tripod and clamp it down. That makes it easy coming on and off. You don't have to be, worry about taking the plate off and getting to the battery door. It's all just built into your small rig cage or your small rig L bracket. Now the ball head that comes with this is actually quite good. I am really impressed with it. It has an adjustment where you can just loosen up and just turn the tripod head left and right. So if you're just trying to change your framing like that, you tighten that up. And it also has two knobs to hold the ball head in place. So essentially what you can do is you can use the main big knob to sort of just get it in position. But as we know with some of these ball heads, sometimes you really, really want to crank them down hard, particularly if you got a heavy lens. So once you've got that first one in, it's still, it's pretty tight. Like it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere, but you've got a second one that you can sort of crank down and that just makes it extra secure. So it's pushing from the two sides and that thing is going to go absolutely nowhere. And that's kind of a unique feature. I don't think I've actually actually come across this on any other ball head to date. Now, if you have your own ball head or if you want to use a video head, you can actually screw the whole thing off and you just have the standard ball head mount on top. So if you want to add a video head, like small head or small rig has a fluid video head that you can add, or if you want to add a really premium high end ball head, I mean, you can get ball heads that cost four or $500. But if you want to add a high end ball head for sort of landscape photography or something like that, you're just going to screw it onto the top of the tripod like that. There are a few things I forgot to mention when I was back in the studio. So I have decided just to include these now. The one is that the tripod also comes with a phone holder. I didn't bring it with me. It is a pretty basic plastic phone holder, but if you do want to use it with your phone, it does come with that. The other thing is it does come with a second set of feet, which is just these sort of little metal pointy bits. This is for sort of harder ground or sort of mud or dirt where the rubber feet might slide. This just digs into the earth. 
and that will keep the tripod from moving when you're sort of in different conditions underfoot. Now there is one little quirk about this tripod that I wanted you to know about and if you know about it, it's not a problem. If you don't know about it, you'll think there's something wrong and you might give you some problems. So if you look right here uh, on the tripod itself, on the legs that come in and out, that flip in and out, there is a point with an Allen key point where you adjust the tension of these legs, how strong they come in and out or how hard it is to put them in and out. Over time, these will get a little bit loose and you have to tension them every once in a while. Now, what you'll see is you've got a place to put the Allen key there, but on the back, there's just sort of an open thread. And the first time I tried to do this, I turned the point where the Allen key was and on the back, it just kept turning and turning and I sort of wondered how am I ever going to tension this? And basically what you need to do is you put the Allen key on one side, they've given you a second Allen key about the same size on the other side, you just wedge that in there and create a little bit of tension by just holding that like this and that creates the tension needed or resistance so when you tighten it, this side just doesn't spin in place. Now until you get the tripod, that won't exactly make sense to you, but I didn't want it to be a situation where you get it, you're not sure what to do about that and you think there's something wrong or you think I gave you a bum steer on this tripod because when I first got it, I thought that was a bit strange and I struggled to figure it out. So anyways, if you do have that issue, that's how you fix it. The other thing I neglected to mention, but I'm sure you're seeing in some of the video clips is the fact that you can actually take the tripod and invert the head to be able to hang the camera upside down. This is really useful when trying to get some really low angle shots that you couldn't possibly get if you didn't have a tripod that could do this. Obviously, once you get back home, you're going to have to flip the image back up right side up in the computer because your camera is upside down. But this is a further really useful and really versatile function that you got on this tripod. And Small Rig does make a number of similar looking tripods, so I will put a link in the description down below to the exact tripod that I'm talking about in this video, as well as some of the other accessories I recommend, like a mini tripod, the Small Rig cage, the Small Rig L bracket, and they all are best price links, so they do take you through to the best possible price on any of the given accessories. And in many ways, this tripod is really kind of what this channel is all about, and that is getting the best in photo and video with the gear that you can afford or the gear that you already have. So if that is something you're into, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell notification.